The Mercedes S-Class, the world's best-selling full-sized luxury saloon, has always stood for the ultimate in automotive opulence. This seventh generation version is one of the most advanced motor cars the Stuttgart maker has ever built and aims to redefine exactly what modern luxury means for this very different age. No longer is an S-Class merely about comfort, refinement and performance. This Mark 7 W223 series model also prioritizes electrification, digitalization and connectivity. There's never been a boardroom level luxury saloon quite like it. The Mercedes S-Class, it's traditionally been the sensible answer to the question that every motoring expert likes to dodge, what's the best car in the world? Other vehicles can be more opulent, faster or better to drive but over the years no other model has so consistently delivered such a technologically advanced blend of automotive virtues. Here we're looking at the seventh generation W223 series model. No previous S-Class has ever been as complex, advanced or sophisticated as this one and it's had to be developed in the shadow of the model that may one day take over its role at the top of the Mercedes range, the all-electric EQS. For the time being though, this W223 Series S-Class continues to set fresh standards. Indeed, Mercedes is claiming that a bigger technological step forward has been taken here than any made with this model line since the S-Class or the Sonda class of badging was first introduced in the original W116 Series model back in 1972. The direct lineage of this model line actually goes back further to the W187 series Model 220 with which Mercedes re-entered the upper luxury segment in 1951, a car that gained S designation in 1956 and formed the basis for a model line which by the time of the launch of this Mark 7 S class in late 2020 had generated over 4 million global sales for the brand. This current car has a tougher brief than any of its predecessors. At its entry point, it has to satisfy successful top-level managers, while at the other end of the lineup, the same design with greater power and opulence has to be good enough to meet the exalted expectations of the Rolls-Royce and Bentley buyers that the Stuttgart maker aims to snare with the exclusive Mercedes Maybach brand. To achieve all this, this car will have to be groundbreaking, but then the S-Class always has been. Our models like this are basically state-of-the-art test beds for the best that their brands can produce. Now, some features will, of course, forever be limited to plutocratic purses, but many others will eventually filter down into the everyday mainstream, and there are plenty of examples of that. The first generation W116 series version pioneered anti-lock brakes in 1978, while the second generation W126 series model introduced airbags in 1981. The ESB stability control system, which every modern car now has, was originally pioneered by the third generation W140 series S-Class in 1995, while active suspension, that was introduced with the fourth generation W220 series design in 1999. Hybrid engines arrived with the 5th generation W221 series model of 2005 and this current car's direct predecessor, the W222 series S-Class of 2013. That was the first of many cars to feature only energy-saving LED technology for all exterior and interior lights. Which brings us to the technology being showcased here, not all of which, sadly, we're being offered in the UK. But there's still plenty to marvel at, from the 3D instrument screen to the self-driving tech, from the augmented reality head-up display to digital headlamps that can project messages onto the tarmac in front of you. All of this, Mercedes tells us, is what modern luxury now means. Are they right? Is this still the finest car in the world? And should you want one more than a rival BMW 7 Series, Audi A8, Porsche Panamera or Maserati Quattroporte? To properly find out, you're going to need the industry's most comprehensive road test film, the Car and Driving Road Test Review.
The S-Class epitomizes Mercedes. It was around long before the brand started selling SUVs, MPVs, crossovers and pickups, and it still defines the brand better than any other model in the lineup. In creating this seventh generation version, the directive to the engineers was exactly the same as it's always been with this flagship contender, build the best car in the world. So what on earth might be awaiting us here? The front of cabin experience, part luxury limo, part Starship Enterprise. A car that can drive itself? Well, yes, this seventh generation S-Class can do that, although currently it isn't allowed to, not under UK legislation at the time of this test anyway. So if you want to bring forward the inevitable start of the autonomous driving era, uh, you'll have to content yourself instead with standing outside the thing and parking it with your phone. Here, though, it's about driving and what Mercedes has done to underline this S-Class model's hard-won status for being the luxury limo which sets the journeying standard for boardroom buyers, ferrying the people who matter between their meetings, their makeovers and their mistresses. Power up and the silence, even with the diesel up front, is striking. Will the rest of the drive experience follow suit? Of course it will. Uh, should the whim strike you, the throttle can be buried into the velour carpet and the legal maximum can be crested like a hot hatch, but that wouldn't be all that elegant, would it? Not unless you're a chauffeur who's avoiding a hijack or your boss in the back is late for his Learjet takeoff slot anyway. Now, assuming that that isn't the case, then you'll want instead to settle in and drive this car as it was intended to be driven, wafting around on the low-speed torque of the inline six cylinder engines that you now have to have with the conventional versions of this seventh generation design. At such speeds, the experience on offer remains a particularly special one, even by the opulent standards of the boardroom segment. Mercedes even once put out a release that cited research they'd done suggesting that when you travelled by S-Class, your pulse rate was actually likely to be lower than in any other rival. That may or may not be true, of course, but there's absolutely no doubt as to the sense of well-being that you get as you take in the sophisticated and classy dashboard, and you sink deeper into seats that feel as if they've been tailored to fit you, and you wonder absently if you're ever going to completely master how this massively complex Mercedes actually works. Throughout, there's a reassurance that you're in the most thoroughly engineered luxury saloon that money can buy. Now, specified correctly, it doesn't actually need your help when it's uh, being driven or parked, but if you do choose to assume control, it'll cost it you in a way that very few cars at any price can. That's the S-Class way. It's been over half a century since we first saw a car that was sold as the S-Class and every generation since has introduced groundbreaking innovations. Uh, Mercedes wants to reassure you that that also features here, which is why the instrument display ahead of you twinkles in 3D and the ambient lighting flashes with the safety features. Pioneering engineering of greater substance, though, uh, seems limited either to safety, uh, the world's first rear seat frontal airbag, or level three or level four autonomous drive development, which, um, as we mentioned earlier on, the UK's legislation and parking infrastructure isn't quite ready for yet. Although you can now use the level three stuff in situations of high traffic density on certain limited sections of German highway at up to 37 miles an hour. Meanwhile, rivals in the segment developing rear axle steering, uh, suspension camera scan and active body control systems will be pleased to hear that from launch anyway. Uh, the Stuttgart brand is restricting those to the plutocratically expensive Mercedes Maybach versions of this model for our market. It also doesn't seem very limo-like that the volume version of this car perambulates around using an engine uh, that many a middle manager would choose for his C-Class, the 3-litre inline six-cylinder diesel which is fitted to the S350D variant that we're trying here. This unit's 286 braked horses also seem a touch inefficient for a saloon over two tonnes in weight. And although it does respond rapidly enough to your right foot, uh, 62 takes 6.4 seconds en route to a limited 155 miles an hour maximum, which all S-Classes share, it can't rapidly build speed without affecting cabin calm in the way that other engines in the range more easily can.
There are three of these in the mainstream range. The first alternative is the same Dizzy unit uprated to 330 horsepower and S400D status in which guys it gains 4MATIC four four-wheel drive and a 100 Nm pulling power boost to 700 Nm, enough to drop the 62 miles an hour sprint to 5.4 seconds. Otherwise, your S-Class will be petrol powered and it'll feature some degree of electrification, either of the token kind in the S500 Formatic, whose 435 horsepower six cylinder petrol unit features the brand's EQ Boost mild hybrid tech, or of the full Monty sort, the rear driven S580E plug in variant uses the same engine in 367 horsepower form and mates it with a 150 horsepower electric motor. Uh, petrol V8s, in case you're wondering, for our market anyway, they're restricted to the high performance Mercedes AMG S63E and S73E variants, which were not announced at the time of this test in autumn 2021, which get a 4 litre twin turbo with plug in tech. We're not really sure why you'd ever need one of those because the S500 Formatic actually has an AMG developed engine, one familiar to us from the road burning 53 model derivatives of the E Class and able to propel this Mercedes to 62 in 4.9 seconds. That's almost as fast as a Porsche 911. With this, there's a huge rush of pulling power from about 1800 RPM onwards, at which point 520 Newton meters of torque is developed from the potent combination of Borg Warner electrically driven supercharger and twin scroll turbocharger. And if you need a particularly rapid overtake, the S500's mild hybrid EQ boost system uh, provides a further 250 Newton meters of torque as well as 22 horsepower of extra power for short periods. With an extra 340 kilos of weight to carry around, the S580E PHEV variant won't feel quite as rapid as that, but it does still crest 62 in 5.2 seconds, and its party piece is a 63 mile all electric driving range, which is nearly double what, at the time of this test, you'd get from a rival plug in BMW 7 Series and Audi A8. You can drive up to 87 miles an hour without troubling the engine, too. Uh, we're surprised that Mercedes hasn't offered that PHEV option to Mercedes Maybach customers, given that many of them will be limo operators wanting private hire registration in London. And that's a city which now mandates PHEV or EV drivetrains as a minimum for that purpose. From the launch of this W223 series generation model, uh, the company's Maybach sub-brand was limiting itself to offering either a 503 horsepower uh, 4 litre V8 or for the embarrassingly wealthy, a 612 horsepower 6 litre V12. Here, as we've said, we've stuck with the base S350D diesel uh, that the majority of UK executives still doggedly seem to prefer, uh, despite the prevailing environmental zeitgeist. As with all S-Class models, the powertrain output slips seamlessly between the ratio to the brand's usual 9G Tronic 9-speed automatic transmission, whose changes you can vary in speed according to your choice of dynamic select drive mode. There are four main ones, Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Plus, as usual, there's an individual menu which allows you to set parameters based around a response from the car's various drive, suspension, steering and ESP stability systems. Modes like these don't always make that much of a difference in modern cars, but they do here. The switch into Sport Plus dramatically improves body control to the point where you can now throw this car around on a twisting road in a way that you would really struggle to with a rival 7 Series or A8. And you can do so without completely corrupting this car's exemplary quality of ride. And it really is exemplary. Uh, it continues to set the standard that uh, rivals like those have to try to aim at. As with all cars in this class, air springs are fitted, but that technology needs careful implementation and a super stiff structure if it's to deliver the magic carpet quality of composure which features here. With Airmatic in an S class, the chassis soaks up tarmac tears and potholes like a huge pillow, reducing speed humps to a distant clonk. Ride quality was always one of the things that was most likely to sell you an S class. It still is, with everything necessary to maintain that taken care of in the background as you drive. In comfort mode, the body is automatically lowered by 10 millimeters at speeds above 75 miles an hour, 
and by a further two millimeters at over 100 miles an hour, all to reduce drag and increase stability. Select Sport and the body is always 10 millimeters lower. It's 17 millimeters lower than standard in Sport Plus. And of course, you can still raise the air sprung suspension manually at the press of a button by up to 30 millimeters, providing you're below 37 miles an hour if you have to go up a steep slope, a ramp, or an unmade road. Airmatic, of course, is a key reason why cruising speeds in this Mercedes are so serene, but not the only one. Uh, splendid isolation from the world around is also delivered by astonishingly well-suppressed wind and road noise, much of that down to a drag coefficient, which is astonishingly slippery for a car of this size, just 0.22 CD. Plus, if you are doing the driving yourself, you'll also enjoy the benefit of what is currently this market's best level two autonomous driving setup, the Mercedes Active Distance Assist Distronic system. Now this works with Active Steering Assist to basically look after all the steering, throttle and braking duties for you at highway speeds. That's providing you reassure the software that you're still paying attention by keeping your clasp on this new capacitive steering wheel. Even night driving can be conducted on another level if your S-Class is fitted out with the digital light headlamps that we have here, which use 1.3 million micro mirrors and can project traffic signs and road warnings onto the tarmac in front of you. In town, maybe as you're piloting this car around using the augmented reality navigation that beams amazingly detailed graphics onto the windshield in front of you, uh, you'll find that this Mercedes eases through urban traffic jams on a different plane to the motoring masses. Although even cabin systems that are designed to relax and ease your day might struggle to cope with the challenge of keeping you free from concern while you're manoeuvring this substantial piece of Stuttgart real estate around a tight multi-storey car park or into a crowded space. It's at that point that you might wish for the Mercedes Maybach model's rear axle steering system. And now that uh, cuts the turning circle down to just 10.8 meters. And that's around about the same as an A-Class. Without that, you'll just have to use the 360 degree camera setup. And if uh, that's not enough to keep the beads of perspiration at bay, then simply saying, hey Mercedes, I'm stressed, will activate a seat massage and the calming, energizing comfort system. Everything then seems to have been very carefully thought through and has been right from the beginning here. Uh, as each S-Class is built and reaches the end of the production line at Mercedes Sindelfingen factory, it's these days no longer driven off by a human. Uh, instead, the car's autonomous operating features automatically drive it out of the plant and into the holding area. Change then is definitely coming and this car really embraces it. People all around the world can recognize an S-Class right away. It's elegant styling, ever an expression of luxury and the automotive grandeur of the era. Mercedes has often described S-Class design as progressive, but in truth, it hasn't always been. And it can't be to any great extent now, because what you and I would describe as a progressive look for a car of this kind is now championed by the car that has to sell alongside this one in the company's showrooms, the all-electric EQS. That leaves the S-Class targeting the more traditionalist boardroom buyers. Uh, these are people who will appreciate the classic cues provided here to a heritage which extends all the way back to this model line's roots in 1951. Unlike with the EQS, what you get here is a classical saloon silhouette, regardless of your choice of body style, the standard S-Class or the even grander Mercedes-Maybach version. There are no longer coupe or cabriolet body style options. If you want the short wheelbase, 5.18 metre long saloon body shape, you'll have to limit yourself to a lower spec S-Class variant. Otherwise, you'll be getting the long wheelbase version, which is 110 millimetres lengthier. Whatever your choice, you'll find that this car is bigger in every dimension than its W222 series predecessor. It's 34 millimetres longer, 55 millimetres wider and 12 millimetres taller in this long wheelbase form. This model line's now even more exalted status is confirmed by the length of what Mercedes calls the prestige measurement. That's a distance from the front axle to the windscreen. 
You'll also note the long passenger cell's lengthy 3.2 metre wheelbase, the flowing C-pillar with its sculpted shoulder and overhangs which are short at the front and balanced at the rear. Character lines along the bodywork have been replaced by cleverly contoured sculpted surfaces which create special light effects. Plus there's carefully positioned use of chrome uh, along these lower side sills for example which separate wheel arches which house rims of between 19 and 21 inches in size. We've got the 21 inches here. Uh, vents in these arches play a key role in the sleek aerodynamics, channeling a mixture of hot and cold air from the engine bay and helping to improve airflow along the vehicle's flanks and underside. Headlamps characterise the frontal look of any car and they certainly do so here, this time with a flatter, smaller three-point daytime running light signature. Further up the range, the beams come fitted with the brand's latest digital light technology, as in this case, designated by this blue pixelated lower silver panel, which uses 2.6 million adaptive pixels and enables the beams to project warning signs as well as light onto the road ahead. These lights flank what Mercedes calls the high-status radiator grill into which the stretch bonnet flows. This is embellished with the proper upright three-pointed star ornamentation, which is missing from most Mercedes models these days. Uh, further down lie these huge uh, twin-finned silver-framed corner intakes. At the rear, a total width measurement now just shy of two metres is emphasised by this chrome strip at the upper edge of these two-section LED tail lights, which widens below the brand badge. And lower down, chrome-framed twin tailpipes confirm that you've resisted the temptation to choose an EQS, or they seem to anyway, these exhaust finishes are actually just decorative. As usual, of course, what is more important is what you can't see. Uh, this seventh generation model is based around a heavily re-engineered version of the brand's MRA, or modular rear architecture platform, and it uses a body shell over half of which is now fashioned from aluminium, although that's not enough to stop the car weighing in at nearly two tonnes. All of which leaves you wondering just what might await you inside. Now the access point to that, as so often in avant-garde modern luxury car design these days, is via flush-fitting door handles that are motorised to spring out on your approach. As usual with this kind of feature, they look a bit coffin-like, but they are nicely branded and they feel suitably solid as you enter into what we're promised will be a completely fresh generation of cabin experience. Sure enough, everything is new here, everything's different. The design objective being the ultimate harmonization of digital and analog luxury. If you thought the cabin of a 7 Series, an A8, or even a Bentley Flying Spur was cutting edge, well, think again and try one of these. Here, instead of merely admiring acres of wooden leather, your eyes are inexorably drawn to the next level screen tech, the 3D digital dials and a huge 12.8 inch central OLED display that seems to float ahead of the centre stack. Mercedes says it set out to create a kind of third place for owners here, a refuge between home and the workplace. If you don't mind your refuge being uh, technologically futuristic, you might even feel that they've succeeded. It really comes down to what you think the ultimate expression of modern luxury should be. Mercedes thinks it knows. Uh, on one side, it's all about the embellishment of conventional premium features, as brands newer to this segment like Audi and Tesla have found, uh, getting wood, leather and metal to blend together with cohesive elegance is really difficult to do. To some extent, this Mercedes still sets the standard and here has significantly improved the luxurious features that surround it. So, for example, in their more elaborate form, these superbly comfortable Nappa leather upholstered seats get these little extra head poofs which hang down from the head restraints like hibernating nocturnal bats. And here at the front, they feature 19 different motors to power the active multi-contour system and 10 different massage programs fitted to each chair. Meanwhile, no fewer than 17-step motors now control the uh, temperature and air distribution of the Thermotronic climate system, and that uses solar sensors to climatically adjust itself. 
but modern luxury must also be anticipatory, which is why with a top variant like this one, a simple statement like, I'm feeling stressed, activates an energizing comfort feature, which begins a soothing seat massage, while it uh, also calms the cabin with relaxing lights and music. At this level of the range, uh, there's practical anticipation too, and that's courtesy of a clever MBUX interior assist setup. For example, if you reach across to the passenger side of the cabin in the dark, the car will automatically illuminate that area that you're looking at. The third thing modern luxury must apparently be is sophisticated, which brings us back to these screens. Now, two of them are separated here at the front, which is worth pointing out because uh, the previous model didn't separate out its displays and because the top versions of a comparable Mercedes EQS have just one giant 55.5 inch hyperscreen, a 17.7 inch middle portion of which deals with the central infotainment functions. Now for the few who have experienced that, this S-Class's layout, a 12.3 inch display for the instruments and this 12.8 inch OLED monitor dominating the center of the fascia might seem a touch underwhelming. Otherwise though, uh, you'll certainly feel state of the art at the wheel of one of these. You might even feel a touch queasy if on the move you look too long at the 3D instrument screen. This is standard above bass trim and it's a feature that even Mercedes admits can make some folk feel nauseous, which is why you can turn it off. The display delivers a sense of depth and it avoids the need for 3D glasses by showing different images to each eye and by reading the driver's head position with a couple of cameras. The result is an extra level of visual perspective, particularly when you uh, switch to its navigation setting and you get what appears to be some kind of relief map. Navigation is just one of the available viewing options you can choose to prioritize with this instrument screen. Using this rather fiddly little uh, tiny touchpad on the steering wheel spoke, you can alternatively select others. There's an assistance layout, which prioritizes drive assistance graphics, or a service screen, uh, now that will show you your maintenance information. Most of the time though, you're probably going to be in one of the four themed drive screen layouts, each with distinct colors, which extend to the bigger center stack monitor once selected. In choosing between these, uh, your options to the usual twin-dialed classic setup are red-tinged sport, the minimalist understated screen, or for the first time in a Mercedes, a pearl-white themed exclusive layout which gives the cabin an even more futuristic feel. On a top variant like this one, the other drive parameter you can tailor in your sightline is the MBUX head-up display. This is the largest that we've ever seen, and it corresponds to the display of a monitor with a diagonal size of 77 inches. In its augmented reality setting, this can project so much information onto the windshield in front of you that it can become distracting, so it's fortunate that there are less cluttered, standard and minimal head-up options, plus coloured sport and eco-display ones too. Relief from all of this unremitting technology certainly isn't delivered by this accompanying central OLED monitor, which has 50% more processing power than the previous generation model screen did. Uh, just to properly use the thing entails creating a user profile, giving Mercedes enough data about you to set up a digital clone. It involves the input of biometric data, including face and fingerprint scans, plus a pin code and a voice print recording achieved by repeating certain phrases. The screen itself is beautifully rendered with its organic light emitting diode tech, climate controls permanently displayed along the bottom of the monitor. Uh, that system's little icons rather disappointingly replacing the previous model's intricately fashioned fascia buttons. Still, the central climate menu makes it easy to make ventilation changes for either the front or the rear of the cabin, or to activate the air quality ionization or air freshener functions. As for the main part of this big portrait screen, well, that's very straightforward. The home screen offers apps, store, uh, comfort, settings, nav, phone, radio, media, and info sections. Comfort, as you'd expect, 
deals with all the seat and massaging features, plus ambient lighting, which can now illuminate to designate certain safety features. In addition, the comfort menu also includes the energizing comfort section that we mentioned earlier on in this film, from which you can select between uh, six themes, which calm you with bespoke lighting, music, screen graphics and massages at the end of the kind of taxing day which enabled you to choose an S-Class in the first place. Uh, you can choose from refresh, warmth, vitality, joy, well-being and training. Plus there are various comfort tips for long journeys too. Elsewhere on the home screen, phone gives you wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, in which guise the monitor layout is especially smart, while vehicle gives you uh, really detailed drive information and apps connects you into an internet browser, a dash cam camera and the energizing coach app, which really nerdy owners, uh, they can link into a compatible smartwatch. Moving between all these many and varied menus can sometimes be a bit laborious and it can make you wish that Mercedes had uh, retained the previous model's lower console touchpad or, even better, implemented the kind of intuitive lower iDrive style rotary dial that you get on a rival BMW 7 Series. But monitored jabs that coat the shiny screen with unsightly fingerprints won't too often be necessary once you master the intricacies of this 7th generation model's updated MBUX voice assistant setup, which recognises 27 languages and can now answer questions as well as uh, delivering vehicle functions. It can't change drive modes though, uh, the various dynamic select settings, uh, they're all accessed to the left of this slim panel at the bottom of the centre monitor with a vehicle button right next door offering a shortcut to regularly accessed functions. Here also is the touchpad for the fingerprint recognition system we referenced earlier. Overall then there's little to fault in terms of technology, comfort or general ergonomics. As for design and finish though, you might like us be left with a few questions. Installing this huge central screen has pushed the centre vents further away from you and has necessitated that their previous visually pleasing round portals are replaced by these uglier square ones that reflect annoyingly onto the windscreen above, as do the twin vertical vents at either end of the fascia. Having this large central monitor also means that there's no place for the beautiful center dash analog clock which has characterized every S-Class generation until this one. And it's all very well having such a huge head-up display, but that necessitates uh, provision of this rather overly large and therefore somewhat unsightly projection box just behind the instrument screen. In addition, there are some build quality issues we doubt we'd ever have found in an older S-Class. This silver button panel ahead of the box between the seats, uh, that can lift out in your hands. And the overhead console near the frameless rear view mirror, that flexes to the touch. On top of that, we are not at all sure that this shiny expanse of curved black plastic between the seats looks particularly premium. And you might easily mistake this uh, anthracite open pore wood trimming for some kind of corrugated cardboard. Uh, that is rather disappointing because you have to have this unless you stretch up to a Mercedes Maybach. Still, at least the gear shift stalk that protrudes from this strangely shaped wheel here isn't lifted directly from a Mercedes Sprinter van as it is with the brand's other passenger cars, although it isn't too much different. And to lift what in standard form is a rather dark and dismal black cabin, there's the welcome, no-cost option of having the upholstery trimmed in lighter sienna brown, or as in this case, a pleasing but potentially difficult to keep clean combination of macchiato beige and magma grey. Uh, the tool, by the way, used to micro-perforate these seats operates with no fewer than 16,000 needles. Whatever your choice of cabin colour, the quilted door panels, uh, they're lovely. They're part of a door card which, uh, rather unusually, doesn't have a conventional handle. Instead, you pull on this um, unusual central ledge. That works rather well, and it's beautifully backlit. We'll finish with a few practicalities. There's not quite as much storage space as you might hope for. The door bins are ludicrously small, and if your car has a fragrance dispenser fitted, that'll take up most of the space in the glove box. And that tries to compensate with an integrated pen clip and coin slots. On top of that, uh, what looks as if it's gonna be a deep 
twin lidded box between the seats here. Well, that turns out to be really disappointingly shallow. Uh, it incorporates a couple of USB ports. They're of the USB-C kind, so you might well need an unsightly adapter. Uh, well, pushing back the uh, shiny piano black lid of this storage area reveals two more USB-Cs, a wireless charging mat, a cubby and two cup holders. There's a small stowage area behind the main central screen, uh, but anything placed there might easily end up uh, deposited down at your feet. Mercedes has forgotten to include an overhead sunglasses compartment, but there are ticket clips in the illuminated sun visors, and you do get a net pocket in the front passenger footwell. Right, time to take a seat in the rear, where, as at the front, the doors open very wide. That's especially if you've got the long wheelbase body style we're trying here. You might not need it because the short model gets 71 millimeters more wheelbase length this time around. The kind of spec that you'll probably want though, you'll have to have this lengthier body style, which in W223 series form gains another 51 mils between the axles. That'll allow even the most amply proportioned passenger to enter with appropriate dignity, stepping across these lovely illuminated silver tread plates. Inside, of course, it's very nice indeed. As you'd expect, there's more legroom than you could possibly need. At first glance, with the central armrest down, uh, it looks almost like there are two individual seats back here. Actually, rather surprisingly, for a limo in this class, from launch, you couldn't have that format as an option with this seventh generation S-Class. In fact, you couldn't even have it with a Mercedes Maybach unless you went for the exorbitantly priced first class version. What you do get though is standard, uh, providing you avoid entry level trim, are rear seats which electrically adjust and feature the lovely pillow-like luxury head restraints that we mentioned in the front. Seat heating and four zone climate control are fitted across the range and plusher variants like the one we have here uh, get upholstery climate control too and heated armrests. The leading edge of the armrest has a pop-out pen tray and pop-out cup holders and raising its stitched lid reveals a cubby with twin USB-C ports. There's a reason, by the way, that this rather useless shallow tray lies just ahead. With top-level trim and with the Mercedes Maybach, this space will be occupied with a 7-inch removable MBUX tablet that you can use around and outside the car to operate all the main infotainment functions. That top level of trim would also get you the brand's chauffeur package and that would offer controls to move the front passenger seat all the way forward plus an extending footrest electrically deploying from it so that a rear seat occupant on that side of the car could really stretch out. Most models get this panoramic sliding roof system which uh, lightens up the cabin beautifully even before you activate the seating lights which lie between the twin roof panels. Taking a third occupant comfortably uh, would be difficult because of the height of this central transmission tunnel above which is a cubby flap which opens to reveal a 12 volt socket and twin USB-C ports. The silver vents just above are complemented by others on the B-pillars which is where you'll also find a coat hook on either side with further retractable ones in the grab handles. Now, the seat back pockets are of the retractable sort too and we love the door card design with its leather stitching, its raised switch panel, the intricate Burmester speaker grille and ambient lighting that can illuminate in two colours. Let's finish by taking a look in the boot, the lid for which is of course power operated. Uh, the space you get inside uh, varies with the variant you choose, but across the range the cargo base is notably deep. With a diesel variant like this one you get 540 litres, that's 30 litres more than the previous generation model offered, that's 35 litres more than the Audi A8 and 25 litres more than the BMW 7 Series. Because the S500 4Matic petrol version doesn't need to incorporate this diesel model's extra tank of AdBlue additive, capacity in that variant rises to 550 litres, but as you might fear, cargo space plummets with the S580e plug-in hybrid to just 325 litres. For reference, a standard Mercedes Maybach model has 505 litres of capacity, that falls to 495 with the individual rear seat configuration of the top first class variant. Unlike with an E-Class, you can't have folding seat backs. Mercedes instead 
gives us this oversized ski hatch, although unfortunately you can't open that from the boot, you can only lock it from here. Another thing missing is the provision for any kind of spare wheel uh, and its lack doesn't free up any significant space beneath the boot floor either. It's neat the way that the raised floor base can be clipped into place with uh, a fabric tie hook though. Another fabric tie hook extends down from the roof of the boot, uh, that roof finish in rather um, premium like black painted metal. Uh, the boot floor has four tie down points, there's a 12 volt socket on the right and there are deep recesses either side so you could easily get your largest bag of golf clubs in width wise. If it's heavy though, you'll need to be careful not to scratch this rather impractically trimmed chrome plated boot lip while you're lumping it in. Uh, there are two boot area LED lights and red lamps integrated into the leading edge of the boot hatch for safety when you're unloading at night. If you've reached the point in life where you, or more likely your company, can afford to buy or lease a new S-Class for your use, then price may very well no longer be a determining factor, which for Mercedes is perhaps just as well, because it's becoming increasingly difficult to get a well-specified version of this model without committing to a near six-figure outlay. Still, a premium outlay has never previously put off high flyers from considering an S-Class, or more likely another S-Class, around 80% of European customers who've previously owned one return to purchase another Mercedes afterwards. This lengthier, long wheelbase body shape is preferred by over 80% of UK customers and closer to 90% worldwide, which is partly because that's what you have to have if you ignore the two most affordable trim options. We'll brief you on those first. Either short wheelbase only AMG line, priced from around £80,000, or AMG line premium spec, which adds around £7,000 to the price and offers the option of this longer body style for an extra £4,000. Either way, there are only two engine choices with these two entry-level specs. Both of them are conventional 3-litre six-cylinder units, either the rear-driven S350D diesel we're trying here with 286 horsepower, still a favourite with British owners, or for around £10,000 more, the considerably gutsier S500 4MATIC petrol-powered version, which has 435 horsepower and all-wheel drive to transmit it to the tarmac. If you want a wider choice of engines and an even higher spec, then a range of S-Class long wheelbase model options sit in the 93 to £115,000 bracket with, in order of ritziness, AMG Line Premium Executive, AMG Line Premium Plus, which is what we have here, and top AMG Line Premium Plus Executive trim levels available to you. With these, you get two additional engine choices. One of them is the higher powered version of the 3 litre diesel, the 330 horsepower S400D, which comes with 4MATIC four four-wheel drive and costs around £5,000 more than the base S350D. The other power plant is the engine that you won't have any choice in selecting if you're planning to acquire this S-Class for private hire registration in London, as that kind of activity these days necessitates plug-in hybrid tech as a minimum requirement when it comes to engine electrification. The S580E PHEV petrol model in question was priced from around £105,000 at launch, around £13,500 more than the base diesel. Saving the planet uh, doesn't come very cheap, does it? You'll need some rival model perspective on the value proposition that those prices represent, on the way to which we'll point out that Mercedes has two other luxury models in the same price bracket, namely its biggest SUV, the seven-seat GLS, which is priced from around £85,000, and the luxury all-electric limo, which one day might replace this S-Class, the EQS, which is priced from around £100,000. If you want an S-Class though, but you come seeking alternatives, you're more likely to be looking at the offerings from Mercedes two 
biggest German rivals. Base diesel versions of either a BMW 7 Series or an Audi A8 will save you around £8,000 on a base S350D. There's a considerably larger price gap though, nearly 20000 between the long wheelbase petrol plug-in hybrid versions of those two rivals, the 745 LE xDrive and the A8 L60 TFSI E Quattro and an S580 E plug-in model. That might put you off the plug-in version of this Mercedes, as might the fact that it lacks the four-wheel drive system, which is standard in those two competitors. But a clincher for the PHEV Merc is its 63-mile all-electric driving range, nearly twice as much as you'll get from those two rivals. You're less likely to be looking at the Lexus LS, which is priced in the same 80 to 115,000 pound bracket as this Mercedes, but it sells in tiny numbers, partly because it's only available in a single self-charging V6 petrol hybrid form. There are only two other credible players in the segment, the Maserati Quattroporte and the Porsche Panamera. Neither can now be had with the diesel engine and both are arguably rather closer in genre to Gran Turismo star models like the BMW 8 Series Grand Coupe and also the Mercedes CLS, uh, maybe even further up the range uh, to the Mercedes AMG GT four-door coupe. For reference though, a uh, base Quattroporte GT would cost a little less than a comparable S500 Formatic, while a comparable Panamera 4S would cost a bit more. Arguably, the uh, various high performance orientated Mercedes AMG S Class models, which hadn't actually been announced at the time of this test in autumn 2021, would suit a likely Maserati or Porsche buyer better. By the way, uh, rather disappointingly for this W223 series design, there won't be coupe or cabriolet versions of this S Class like the variants that Mercedes made of the previous generation model. So that's briefed you on the S-Class range and its competitors. But of course, none of the cars that we've just mentioned so far will be of very much interest to you if you're the kind of high flyer who expects instead to be chauffeured around in a Bentley or a Rolls-Royce of some kind. Now, to attract uh, that kind of customer, an altogether more uh, exalted level of pavement presence is of course required. And that's exactly why this Stuttgart brand uh, makes the much grander looking Mercedes Maybach versions of this car. Uh, now, two long wheelbase trim levels are available here. They're both petrol powered and they both have formatic traction. The standard S580 model costs from just over £163,000 at launch and it comes with the company's 8-cylinder 503 horsepower engine. Just under £14,000 more would upgrade you to the top first-class trim with that Mercedes Maybach S580. Or if you're prepared to push your company spend to just over £201,000, then you can have the same first class variant with the Maybach model line's absolutely grandest 6 litre 12 cylinder 612 horsepower engine. One for the plutocrats only. For reference, a Bentley Flying Spur costs from around £170,000, while a Rolls Royce Ghost, well, that costs from around £250,000. Our focus here, though, is on this S-Class model, and if having considered all the options, you conclude that it is this Mercedes that you really want, then you're going to need to know, obviously, just how generous the brand has been when it comes to the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. And let's start with base AMG line trim, which comes with 19-inch AMG five-spoke tantalite grey alloy wheels, uh, aromatic air suspension, the Mercedes LED multi-beam intelligent light system for the headlamps, power closing doors and a powered boot lid, privacy glass, keyless go keyless entry and metallic paint. Inside the two big screens that characterise this latest generation model are present and correct, a 12.3 inch driver display and a 12.8 inch OLED touchscreen central display, the latter incorporates augmented reality navigation and a nine speaker DAB sound system. There is exquisite cabin trim of course with quilted style Nappa leather upholstery that you can specify in black, sienna brown or if you want a lighter cabin in macchiato beige, the latter replaces the usual black headliner with a beige one. And in an S-Class you'll be surrounded by anthracite open pore poplar wood trim 
and your grip, a multifunction sports steering wheel that's trimmed in Nappa leather. You'll want all the usual executive niceties, of course. Power-operated heated front seats with memory settings, plus wireless smartphone integration with a wireless charging mat. Thermotronic four-zone automatic climate control with rear seat controls too. Ambient lighting with 10 colour schemes and 64 colours. Heated rear seats and illuminated door sills. There's even a forward-facing dash cam. As you'd expect, there's the usual Mercedes Dynamic Select Driving Mode system, plus an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, AMG floor mats, a special Magic Vision wipers with jets on the arms, a first aid kit and a through-loading hatch for the rear seat. The petrol models get heat insulating, dark tinted, noise insulating and infrared reflecting laminated glass too. But you probably haven't got this far in life to stick with an S-Class in base trim. So just how much more kit is delivered if you spend more and you venture further up the range? Well, we would counsel you to stretch at least as far as AMG line premium spec because you'll need to stretch to that level to get the 3D version of the driver display instrument screen which knowledgeable friends will want to see. And from this trim level upwards, you also get the far better audio setup, the 710 watt Burmester 3D surround 15 speaker system with a sound personalization feature so you can tailor the audio uh, to the personal profile of yourself that you set up on the central screen. Uh, you additionally get the brand's parking package, which also gives you a 360 degree surround camera system and auto parking capability too. Bigger 20-inch AMG multi-spoke wheels and a panoramic sliding roof also come with AMG line premium trim. And with the long wheelbase body style, you'll also get climatised, electrically retracting rear seats. Mid-level AMG line premium executive trim is what you'll need to get this 7th generation S-Class model's pioneering forward-facing rear airbag technology. Rear side bags are fitted at this level too, along with a belt feeder, illuminated designer belt buckles and rear phone charging pad. Another step up in technology comes if you're able to move on further to the AMG line premium plus trim level we have here, which has some real innovations. This digital light headlamp system, for example, which uses 2.6 million adaptive pixels and enables the beams to project warning signs as well as light onto the road ahead. Uh, then there's the MBUX interior assist system, which uses cameras in the overhead control panel and learning algorithms to anticipate and to recognize your wishes. So if you're looking for something in the front passenger seat, in the dark, for example, it'll automatically switch the light on. And natural hand movements, uh, they are also recognized so that, for example, you can open the sliding roof touch-free. And there's more, a front energizing package with comfort programs which use light, music and massage to soothe you. Uh, the massage is courtesy of front active multi-contour seats with three-stage climatization, extra headrest cushions and inflatable air chambers that adjust to support you through the bends. Uh, plus there's heat not only for the steering wheel and for the windscreen glass, but also for the armrests and for the centre console. That's along with an air balance fragrance diffuser and an MBUX augmented reality head-up display, which is so large that it looks as if the various icons it can show are having a party on the windscreen. Avoid the PHEV variant and you get the larger 21-inch Himalaya grey alloy wheels too. And finally, if you absolutely must have everything there is to have on your S-Class, then you'll need top AMG line premium plus executive trim, which prioritizes the rear seat experience. At this level, you get the chauffeur package, which allows the front passenger seat to be moved right forward, enabling the rear seat occupant behind to stretch out using the electric footrest, which extends from it. Really lovely. At the back with this top trim level, you get the MBUX rear tablet, which can be used uh, inside and around the car and outside it to control all the various infotainment functions. Plus there are sun blinds for the side and rear windows, a rear phone charging mat and adaptive rear lighting, which allows you to adjust the brightness, the size, the color and position of the light source. In addition, there's a whole new level of rear seat safety thanks to the brand's latest and currently unique 
forward facing rear airbag and that's complemented by rear side bags and belt bags. That only leaves the separate plutocratic Mercedes Maybach models. A bit disappointingly, you have to stretch to these to get four of the greatest innovations that have been introduced with this seventh generation W223 series design. E-active body control that counteracts body lean through the bends and uses surface scan camera technology to prepare the airmatic suspension for bumps before you reach them. Uh, rear axle steering too, that dramatically reduces the car's turning circle. Active ambient lighting, which can assist the safety and autonomous drive systems with flashing cabin colors. And the 31 speaker, 1750 watt, Burmester high-end 4D surround sound system adds an extra dimension to the audio experience by introducing uh, vibrating exciters into each seat along with ear level front seat speakers. All Maybach owners also get the MBUX uh, high-end rear seat entertainment system with its twin 11.6 inch screens, one on each front seat backrest. Uh, they're linked to a TV tuner plus electrically opening rear doors, a garage door opener, and the rear seat comfort package, which reclines the backrest and massages you. There are unique 20 inch Maybach forged wheels, the steering wheel rims finished in wood and leather, the roofs trimmed in suede-like Dynamica, and the floor mats are of the Rolls-Royce-like high pile variety that you just sink your feet into. In addition, there's Maybach exclusive Napa leather upholstery with the same color options as for the S-Class, plus one extra one, uh, silver, grey and black. And the cabin inlays are in Designio black piano lacquer trim with flowing lines, although you can swap those out for brown burr walnut inlays or trimming in black poplar wood. True VIPs can further upgrade their Mercedes Maybach to top first class status, which gives you separate luxury individual executive rear seats separated by an extended center console incorporating a fridge compartment and champagne flutes. Folding tables retract out of the wood trimmed Designio front seat backrests. There's also a Napa leather roof liner, while outside the bigger 21 inch multi spoke. Forged wheels fitted at this level mean that the rear axle steering system, although still impressive, can't turn quite as tightly. Whatever S-Class or Mercedes Maybach model you decide on, you'd expect it to come dripping with the latest information technology. And of course, uh, there's certainly plenty of that here. Like all the latest Mercedes designs, this one incorporates what the brand calls car to x communication. Now, this is a mobile phone supported exchange of information system, which will see your S-Class uh, sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other Mercedes drivers. And that will mean uh, that in a way that is almost magical, your S-Class will know in advance about things like icy conditions and traffic jams. It's very clever. And of course, there's an app. There's always an app, isn't there? Uh, this one's called Mercedes Me Connect, and it does all the usual vehicle monitoring things once you've registered for it, uh, like reminding you when a service is due, plus it can automatically detect and share with you all details in your car's wear and tear items, or perhaps the fuel level, the oil level, or the tire pressures. Plus, it can remotely lock the car if you've forgotten to. In addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast accident and breakdown recovery, and it will automatically alert the rescue services in the event of an accident. It can even track your S-Class if it's been stolen. It can tell you if it's left a pre-agreed geographical boundary if you lend it out, and it can tell you where the vehicle is if you forget where you parked it. It's worth mentioning that many of this car's uh, clever app features are only available free of charge for the first three years of ownership. Among these, a deeply cool remote parking package, which allows you to stand outside the car and park it in tighter spaces using your smartphone. What you can't do for the time being is to use the automated valet parking feature already built into this car for AVP compatible multi-storey car parks just starting to be introduced in Germany. With these, you can drive to a drop-off point at the entrance to the car park, disembark with all your passengers and luggage, and then prompt the car from your smartphone to go to park itself. On your return, a phone prompt will summon the car obediently back to the same place. 
Also integrated into this car for activation in the future is the MBUX smart home function via which from the car on the move you'll be able to use smart activated features in your home like lights, the heating system and the house alarm. So if you've rushed out without turning off all the lights that's no problem. You might want to activate the garage light in readiness for your arrival home, uh, maybe heat up the hallway or ask the car if all the house windows are closed. Less pleasantly, the system could advise you if someone's trying to break in. For right now, a less futuristic feature that works via the Mercedes Me Connect phone app is Urban Guard, which monitors this car when it's parked and alerts you remotely if it's bumped should the alarm go off or worse, should someone be trying to tow it away. Your phone will instantly tell you how severe the parking damage is and on which part of the vehicle it occurred. Avoid base trim and your car will come with the upgraded Urban Guard Plus service. Now that will be able to locate this Mercedes if it's stolen, even if the thief has disabled the tracking function. Plus, parking collisions will be recorded by the car's 360 degree camera system so that if you return to the car and find it dented, the accident can be reconstructed with time and place. Right, what about extra cost features? Well, to make life simple, there are hardly any, well, almost none anyway. You can add velour floor mats, a reversible mat for the boot, and a transportable cool box for the brand's genuine accessories range, if you really want to. Overall, though, Mercedes thinks, quite rightly, that customers won't want to go box ticking. They'll merely move up a trim level if they want more kit, which is fair enough, but we think quite a few customers would really have liked the option to add in the four groundbreaking W223 series design features that we mentioned earlier were only available on a Mercedes Maybach. The e-active body control, the rear axle steering, uh, the active ambient lighting, and the Burmester high-end 4D surround sound system. Perhaps uh, that will change during this model's production run. Who knows? But it's worth asking your dealer about that if any of those features interest you. Uh, we mentioned metallic paint was standard earlier. We've got Rubelite red metallic here. There is one extra cost paint finish an S-Class customer can pay extra for, Designo diamond white metallic. With a Mercedes Maybach model, when it comes to personalised paintwork, it's a slightly different story there because you can get the rather dubious effect that's delivered by a range of two-tone paint finishes, which at the time of this test added nearly £14,000 to the cost of the car. On a Mercedes Maybach first-class model, you can also spend another £28,000 on a Maybach exclusive Napa leather design package, which trims the cabin in more unique design crystal white leather and that's complemented by silver grey pearl trim. Right, enough with all that. On to safety, which down the years has always been a primary consideration for Mercedes with this car. It helps that the aluminium hybrid body structure here is fundamentally very strong, with a rear structure divided into two separate crash zones, the one housing the fuel tank, kept almost defamation-free in an impact by cast aluminium sections. Beyond that, there's some really groundbreaking stuff here, and every S-Class model is absolutely festooned with radars and cameras. Specifically, there are multi-mode radars at the front and rear, plus the front also gets a long-range radar and a stereo multi-purpose camera. For close-range sensing, there are 12 ultrasonic sensors and four 360-degree cameras. All of this allows this W223 series Mark 7 S-Class model to showcase the entire contents of Mercedes' driving assistance package, a pricey extra lower down the range. You'll find the main camera features grouped into the centre screen's settings menu in three categories. The main items lie in Avoid Contact, which has Active Brake Assist Autonomous Braking, as you expect, although with this model the activation speed limit has been raised from 44 to 74 miles an hour and it now incorporates a cross-traffic function which detects pedestrians and vehicles cutting across your path when you're making a turn. Avoid Contact also includes ESP Stability Control, Active Lane Keep Assist and Active Blind Spot Assist, the latter two functions using subtle steering assistance to correct the car when required. Two other categories lie in the settings menu. There's Driving, which has Active Distance Assist, Active Steering Assist and Active Lane Change Assist. 
And finally, there's the assistance category, which has traffic sign assist, which not only projects signs onto the dash, but can also warn you if you're running a stoplight. And attention assist too, which monitors you for drowsiness. Plus there's traffic light view. Now that helpfully projects the changing traffic light signals onto the screen when you're stopped under a traffic light. And that would uh, normally mean that you'd have to uh, crane your neck up to see it. Other driving assistance package features include active emergency stop assist, which initiates emergency braking if evasion is impossible. There's also an active evasive steering assist feature that can support you in making evasive manoeuvres if a pedestrian or a cyclist suddenly appears in your path. Plus a clever route-based speed adjustment feature works with GPS data to automatically adapt your speed before curves, roundabouts and junctions. It has end of traffic jam and active stop and go functions too. Uh, there's also pre-safe plus, which takes preventative measures when a rear end collision threatens, uh, including warning following traffic and locking the brakes on standstill. And you also get the brand's clever pre-safe plus and impulse side tech, which better prepares the cabin for a heavy side impact. Uh, using inflatable bolsters inside the seats, it puts more space between those inside the car and whatever might be just about to smash into it. All the more basic stuff you'd expect is in place as well. So there's an active bonnet to protect pedestrians. There's crosswind assist to help on blowy days, along with tyre pressure monitoring and all the usual electronic aids for traction and braking are of course included too. Right, on to airbags. We should definitely talk about those because Mercedes once again has taken a real development lead here, reminding us that it was the second generation W126 Series S Class that introduced the whole concept of airbags back in 1981. Today, as you'd expect in this Mark 7 design, all the usual airbags are in place at the front and along the flanks of the interior, including large window bags that cover the side windows like a curtain. What we haven't seen before, though, in any car is a frontal airbag for rear seat occupants. Introduced with this seventh generation S-Class as a groundbreaking innovation and standard fit, providing you avoid the first two trim levels and start your search in the range from mid-level AMG line premium executive upwards. Mercedes is keen to stress that this feature doesn't exclude the wearing of rear seat belts, although it certainly would prevent serious injury in the event, uh, the kind of injuries that Princess Diana suffered when, without a seat belt on, she perished in the back of an S-Class back in 1997. The frontal rear bag inflates gently but effectively, and it completely prevents a rear seat occupant from hitting the seat in front in an impact. Uh, with the same mid-trim level upwards, you also get rear side airbags and top spec AMG line premium plus executive trim adds rear belt bags too. No other luxury limo protects its rear seat occupants anything like as effectively as this one. Finally, let's talk about autonomous driving. Now, Mercedes reckons it leads the field here, but it's difficult to know exactly which manufacturer it does these days because legislation in the UK doesn't yet recognise the so-called Level 3 autonomous drive systems, which enable you to allow the car to drive itself completely independently of you for short periods while you turn your attention to other things. This seventh generation S-Class has been engineered to do that and it can do so on certain uh, specially designated sections of German highway, although only at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. Frustrated a little by this, Mercedes has done its best to make sure that this car has the best level two autonomous system and you could argue that the brand's active distance assist Distronic system uh, does fit that description. Now this is designed to operate on a dual carriageway and it works uh, with the active steering assist setup that we mentioned earlier on and that keeps you in the centre of your designated lane and it will, if needed, apply subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you ought to be. Uh, the uh, Distronic feature, well that's basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control system which automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. It also works the active speed limit assist feature which automatically sets the cruise control to speed limit signs as you pass them.
You could argue that ultimate cost of ownership efficiency might not be crucial to a typical S-Class customer these days. Uh, those for whom it is will, after all, have chosen to opt instead for the brand's all-electric EQS model, uh, the car that might one day take over the flagship Zonda Klasse Mantel at the top of the Stuttgart brand's product range. But the captains of industry who keep the uh, German S-Class production lines rolling at Factory 56 in Sindelfingen must be ferried to important meetings in cities that are becoming increasingly stringent on vehicle emissions. So the engine range electrification program needed stepping up for the seventh generation model. There's not much evidence of that with the six-cylinder diesel variants that most British customers still choose, although Mercedes insists that it has comprehensively refettled the OM656 series 3-litre unit in question to reduce its CO2 emissions. Uh, exhaust after-treatment measures have been considerably extended, but not by enough, it seems. This model's readings up to 42.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 173 grams per kilometre of CO2 pale in comparison with the best figures you'll get from a rival BMW 730D, 50.4 mpg and 147 grams per kilometre. The same Mercedes engine in the Gutsier S400D formatic, weighed down with an all-wheel drive system, returns uh, up to 38.7 miles per gallon and 192 grams per kilometre. Again, way off for comparable 7 Series. The 740LD xDrive manages 46.3 miles per gallon and 172 grams per kilometre. It's not very difficult to explain this discrepancy. Uh, BMW has implemented the 48 volt mild hybrid drive tech, which Mercedes hasn't bothered with for the diesels at the time of this Mark 7 model S Class's original launch. Although we expect that to come later, perhaps at the point that you're actually viewing this film, in fact. Anyway, what we can say right here and right now is that the 48 volt mild hybrid system is present and correct in the six cylinder, three litre green pump fueled engine of the alternative mainstream petrol model, the S500 Formatic. Normally, when we're describing mild hybrid powertrains, uh, we start with the disclaimer that this kind of token electrification is considerably less effective than the full hybrid tech that was pioneered by Toyota and Lexus. Except that doesn't apply here. The S500's figures, bests of 32.1 miles per gallon and 187 grams per kilometre, are usefully better than the readings of a rival Lexus LS500H all-wheel drive featuring a full hybrid engine which manages 31.4 miles per gallon and 214 grams per kilometre. Even with two fewer driven wheels, a rival BMW 740i can't do much better. Unlike that Lexus, a 48 volt equipped mild hybrid S500 formatic model can't ever run independently on battery energy alone. Instead, its EQ Boost setup sees a belt driven integrated starter generator replacing the standard alternator, enabling the recovery and storage of energy that's usually lost during braking and coasting to charge a tiny 48 volt lithium ion air cooled battery pack. The starter generator also acts as a motor, integrating with the engine and using the stored energy that it harvests to provide extra pulling power during normal driving and acceleration, as well as running the vehicle's electrical ancillaries and also uh, helping the power plant's stop-start system in urban traffic. You might though want an S-Class that can do better. Indeed, you might need an S-Class that can do better if you plan on registering this Mercedes for use in one of the European capital cities like uh, London, which insist on PHEV or EV drivetrains for private hire registration. It's a need the Stuttgart maker meets with the S580e plug-in variant, which, as we've explained elsewhere in this film, takes a detuned version of the S500's 3-litre petrol engine and mates it with a 150-horsepower electric motor. With pretty astonishing results, uh, we've been used to plug-in petrol limos in this segment managing no more than around 30 miles on full battery power. To be specific, at the time of this test in autumn 2021, an Audi A8 6 TFSIE could manage 32 miles and a BMW 745e delivered up to 34 miles. The S580's figure up to 63 miles is achieved courtesy of a much larger 28.6 kilowatt hour battery. That's potentially the difference between regularly filling up with fuel and hardly ever having to bother. 
You will need a regular charging regime which makes that work of course, but that shouldn't be too difficult. An S580e replenishes itself from 10 to 100% at an AC3 phase, 11 kilowatt wall box in 2 hours 15 minutes. And from 10 to 80% at a 60 kilowatt DC public charger in just 20 minutes. The CO2 stat that matters for taxation is pie in the sky, of course, but it's very impressive nevertheless. Uh, 19 grams per kilometre, as is the 353.1 miles per gallon combined cycle fuel figure. That emissions reading reduces the benefiting kind tax exposure of an S580e to just 7%. It's 37% for the other variants in the range. And on an S580e, you won't need to buy a VED tax disc for year one of ownership and your VED payment will be only £145 per year thereafter. All of this substantially reduces the PHEV variance pence per mile running cost figure, of course, although not to the extent of compensating for the S580e's considerably greater asking price. As we mentioned in our market and model range section, you're going to need around £13,500 more for the plug-in variant than you would for a comparably equipped version of the S350D diesel we're trying here. Take everything into account, asking price, running costs, a lot, and over three years and 30,000 miles, uh, this is according to Autotrader data, an S580e with base AMG line premium trim that would cost 212.67 pence per mile to run for a comparably spec S350D, the figure is 188.98 pence per mile. This S350D has the advantage of the big 76 litre fuel tank that it shares with the S500 Model 2. For the S580E, uh, the fuel tank size is reduced to 67 litres. Whatever S-Class model you choose to get anywhere near the officially quoted figures, the driver will of course have to play his or her part. To start with, that means regularly selecting the Dynamic Select Driving Mode System's Eco setting. Uh, now this marginally limits the accelerator pedal curve and it also additionally slightly restricts the output of the seat heating, the heated rear window and also the air conditioning. Uh, you can also bring up a display on the central infotainment screen which will help you here. A consumption section of the info menu uh, that shows your average fuel figure over the last uh, 7.5 minutes, 30 minutes, 90 minutes or 3 hours. The head up display also has an eco display section with green and blue graphics which will help you drive more economically uh, taking the form of a ball rolling over a stylized road. What else? Uh, well, there's a 30-year warranty against corrosion. Yep, you heard that right. And we'll tell you also that the comprehensive three-year unlimited mileage warranty is built on by Mercedes Mobilo scheme uh, that delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years. That's as long as you continue to have your car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. Uh, servicing, by the way, is needed every 12 months or every 15,500 miles, whichever comes around first. And it's worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by going for the optional service care package. Now that takes care of routine maintenance, it spreads the cost of regular servicing and it guarantees the price of parts and labour for up to four services and it covers the cost also of all recommended service items like uh, brake fluid, spark plugs, uh, air filters, fuel filters and screen wash. There's also a service segment of the instrument screen with an Assist Plus dashboard service indicator. Uh, now that monitors engine use and it tells you exactly when a garage visit is due. The same display shows engine oil level, temperatures around the car and if you have a diesel variant uh, when the AdBlue additive that's needed for the exhaust emission system uh, needs topping up. It's also worth noting uh, that the Mercedes Me remote online services package uh, includes remote self-diagnostic capability and that enables your S-Class to monitor wear and tear items and to alert your local dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. As for the question of residual values, well, uh, independent experts reckon that a typical S350D variant like this one should retain 45% of its value after three years and 36,000 miles. That's a showing that's comparable or better than the best that could be managed by direct rivals. 
You can insure your car through Mercedes too, although most company drivers will of course have that included in their lease cost. If you do pay the insurance on the car yourself, then you'll need to know that all S-Class models are rated at a top of the shop group 50. But then you never thought that looking after what might just be the best car in the world would come cheap, did you? A word to finish about recyclability, uh, more than 98 kilos of components made from resource conserving materials are used in this Mark 7 S-Class. Uh, the number of components that contain recyclables is now 120, that's more than twice as many in the preceding model. And each car contains about 40 kilos of further renewable raw materials. For example, a special recycled thread called Econil is used for the floor carpet and that's fabricated from regenerated nylon previously destined for landfill, for instance from old fishnets and fabric remnants from carpets. It's all good to know and it might certainly make a top executive using this car feel better about telling his employees to turn off their screen savers at night while he's parking his Mercedes in the lot below them. This S-Class spearheads technological development not only for Mercedes-Benz but for the automotive industry as a whole and it has done for decades. It's that important and it's why this is and will continue to be the world's best-selling full-sized luxury sector saloon. Other things we would change. Well, possibly. There's a danger that the uber-conservative looks might quickly date. The complex cabin technology takes a lot of getting used to. And interior finish, if we're honest, isn't perfect. But it's better in the back than its rivals, where it matters. No competitor rides better either. It's just disappointing that for our market, at the time of this test, Mercedes was denying customers in the conventional S-Class range many of the sophisticated features that put the finishing touch to this W223 series design. The rear axle steering, the e-active body control and the 4D sound system are all, for some reason, restricted to the plutocratically expensive Mercedes Maybach model. Even as it is though, this seventh generation S-Class remains very competitive with, and in some cases a step ahead of, its key luxury segment rivals. Now that was vital if it was going to be able to continue to compete with everything from a comparably costly Audi A8 to a Bentley Flying Spur potentially priced at twice as much. No other rival has as difficult or as wide-ranging a brief, but then no other car brings this one's timeless clarity and effortless superiority to such an advanced and wide-ranging portfolio of talents. It can power to supercar speeds and Mercedes AMG guys. It can deliver an average of over 40 miles per gallon in this volume mainstream S350D diesel form. And it can be specified to eerily steer, power and brake itself at a cruise in whatever form you decide on. Yes, other rivals may look more avant-garde or handled with a touch more involvement. In overall terms, though, Mercedes has done enough here to enable this S-Class to remain a benchmark for the kind of luxury saloon that every prestige brand would like to build. As it always was, it's a reference point for the current state of automotive technology. The best car in the world? Well, you'll feel like it is if you choose one.